All right, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Very good. All right, um, I like doing weird things at the beginning, beginning of my speeches, so let's do another weird thing, okay? Um, what I'm doing up here isn't terribly important. I'm just gonna flail my hands a little uh, around a little bit. I'm just gonna stay in here looking fabulous. Um, so I'm gonna ask you to do this. Everybody close your eyes. Okay? We're gonna be playing a little bit in the, in the theater of the mind, okay? What I'm gonna be talking about today is virtual reality, okay? Understand that what you're seeing with your eyes isn't necessarily what VR can do for you, okay? So we're gonna use a little bit of your mind so that you'll understand that there is a lot of potential and value to using your mind, okay? So before I continue, as of right now, imagine this. We are on a grassy hill overlooking a European village by the side of it as a lake, okay? It's a gorgeous day, the skies are the bluest blue, the greens are vibrant and popping out. Standing in front of you, you guys are all looking at me, and we are having this discussion. Okay, now you're using your virtual reality. Okay, I'm here to discuss with you several of the points that are beneficial of, of virtual reality. And by the end of this, I'd like to make sure that you recognize the value of it and take action to go ahead and purchase and support VR as a technology for this holiday season. Um, to begin with. Um, I'm sure you all have heard my speeches, and you guys have your opinion of me personally, um, however what you believe it, but I think that I've convinced you in the, in the, uh, in the past that um, I do my research, I'm thorough, and what I say is generally true and can apply to you as yourself. As we're all kind of students, we're all kind of in that, that millennial uh, area. Of so I want you to take what I'm saying um, as something that will definitely be valuable to you, okay? Um, to begin with, uh, virtual reality is a growing industry, okay? At the very beginning, um, we, we've had uh, technologies that you've all adapted to. You've all picked up cell phones. You guys have been working with mice. You guys have been working with computers and, and televisions and VCRs, DVD players, since you could barely, barely walk, okay? Um, uh, Do you know that the first motion capture device that we were using was a mouse that was designed in 1964. Um, this is a statistic pulled, or a, a fact that has been pulled from uh, a Computer History uh, Museum um, down online. Um, since then, that has obviously evolved. It was originally a block of wood with a wheel in it attached to a circuit board. Okay, we've changed it and evolved in the 1970s um, to the ball mouse that allows us multiple axes of movement. And recently, since as early as 2006, we've had like the weak motion capture, where you can swing a thing around in the air in a three-dimensional area, and it'll capture that movement and everything like that. Okay? Feel that? Feel that sunlight? Sunlight beating down on you? Take a look around you. Still, you're still on that green hill. Excellent. Very relaxed. We're very comfortable up here. I'm not shaking, obviously. The. <laughs> um, so again, you're good with this technology. As a matter of fact, there's a website, uh, C Analysis, that captured in 2017, a, a little over a year be after VR was released. In quarter three, we were already shipping over a million units of uh, VR technology, headsets and motion controllers. Um, as early as this year, in July, we've actually doubled that amount that we're shipping out of the fourth quarter. So this is something that is growing and swelling. Um, all right, now you're done with the hill, right? Relax for a second, let your mind go blank. You're sitting in absolute blackness, okay? But you're starting to hear the echoes from around you. You're in a marble hall. You have three-story vaulted ceilings above you. Surrounded, you are surrounded on all sides by gorgeous pieces of art, paintings. You now have marble statuary, you now have um, confusing modern art that doesn't make any sense, but it's, you're able to experience this techno or this, uh, this art in its full, uh, or, um, its full array of aesthetics from right where you're sitting, okay? You have, again, vibrant colors, you have gorgeous textures, okay? Now we're in that place. Virtual reality has innumerable tech, uh, uses, okay? Um, the healthcare in industry is using virtual technologies to help treat PTSD. They're putting people in situations 
where they are feelings they have feelings of safety. They have feelings um, where they can take themselves to a place that um, again is safe, and that they can help start coping with the things that they've had to deal with. Um, they're now using virtual reality uh, not only in health but in uh, space travel in order to control virtual robotic arms. They can manipulate things in, in environments that humans can't operate. Um, we're working on technology where virtual reality surgeons can uh, perform um, uh, surgery or analysis through virtual reality from across the globe. Um, it has applications obviously in the entertainment. Uh, the g games industry has taken and ran with virtual technology. Um, we have everywhere between um, swords and sorcery fighting games. We have um, uh, the opportunity to watch a panoramic um, uh, three-dimensional movie 360 degrees from the comfort of our home. We can sit, look around, and see an IMAX sized screen and be covered in surround sound within a 15 by 15 foot area in our own living room. It's going to be really immersive, and I think everybody, especially the person grading me, is really going to enjoy that technology in the future. Um, <laughs> um, uh, what else do we have? Uh, physical. Again, we, we've incre increased the ability to do physical things. We're no longer doing a two-dimensional plane when we're making motions when we're doing this. We'll have hand sensors, and there are actually, for an additional cost, sensors that you can attach to other limbs that can be tracked by this technology. So there are games where you are flailing your hands around. You have um, very, very fine motor control in order to control um, the way a, a rifle would be using. In other words, to perform yoga, you can have your virtual reality headset on and you can be instructed by someone in real life from where you're at. Okay? There's a lot of opportunity for you to raise your heart rate, which is definitely good for your health, and you could also be using it for muscle, muscle control, which is balance, etc. Oh, goodness, what else is there for technology? Um, safety. Have you ever wanted to go and like free climb in Yosemite. How many of you people are gonna jump out of this classroom, stick yourself to a rock face, and climb 18 stories up in the air? I, I think, hopefully not very many of you, but with virtual reality, you can do that. You can grab your little hand boats, and you can pull yourself up and take a panoramic view, hanging from, your, uh, from, hanging from a cliffside, and see all the wonders of our national parks right from your living room, okay? So there's a lot of experience that can be, uh, that can be had. Um, again, like our, um, our little thought experiment that we're working on, you can go to uh, museums, okay? Um, to, uh, you can go to operas, you can go to um, interactive displays. With the technology you can also create. There's, uh, Google has a, a software called Tilt Brush, where you will, in a three-dimensional space, create three-dimensional art. It's really interesting. Um, I do recommend that you guys look it up. Uh, I think that you can enjoy this. So based upon um, the needs um, that we prioritize, we have safety, we have physical apt uh, aptitude and exercise that will help us with the physics. We have um, uh, our ability to uh, entertain ourselves and our ability to um, excel or um, gain more self-esteem, even VR chat. As a matter of fact, you can go and, and chat with people from across the world in a VR space. Um, so you have that social interaction that most people need and desire. Um, last thing we're gonna talk about is cost. The, the, the virtual reality technology has been available since 2016. And as a matter of fact, um, all of the devices have dropped at least $100 in price. Some of them have dropped a couple of hundred dollars, and with Black Friday, they've, many of them have dropped even farther. This is something that is attainable. This is something that's the cost of one of the consoles you already have at home. You probably still have your, um, uh, you'll probably still need an actual reasonable computer to use it on, but this is definitely something that you can get right now. So in conclusion, which I should have said, um, I'm going to go ahead and I've explained to you that this is something that is growing and is going to continue growing. This is something that you can use.
for a variety of things, and I've, it lets you know that it's a lot easier to buy. So I'm going to give you my last 10 seconds of the speech to pull out your phones and go and start ordering that VR technology right now. Okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> JP, what do you think? Um, now, Ryan, you're a pretty good man. It's uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, good 10 minutes. You uh, gave examples. You started off a great time. You were near that one. <laughs> uh, it's pretty good. And, yeah. So I thought, boy, I thought I was telling Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, the green's a little bit awkward. Asking the uh, audience to close their eyes is not necessarily a bad thing, but you have to have it planned a little bit more, and you can't expect us to keep our eyes closed for a long period of time. So I think you need to get your visualization going at the beginning. Uh, and have it relatively brief and then introduce the subject. I think that would work a little bit more effectively. I know generally what your topic is. Uh, you've got a pretty clear statement of what your goal is for the presentation. There's not really much of a preview. It's mostly, um, you know, like I said, the end point that you've given us a direction on. Uh, you, you do a little bit trying to use your ethos, uh, suggesting that you are thorough in doing your research, and I think we probably are going to will be willing to give you some uh, credential on that, but that doesn't mean that you are excused from providing some sources in your presentation, and I'm not sure that you did that as thoroughly as you might have. Um, the, uh, the one place where there's an organization <laughs> of the material is when you start listing off all of the potential applications. Other than that, I think that there's not as much structure to this as there needs to be. Uh, the visualizations are pretty solid. You've got a lot of positive you know, uh, visualization with the things that might be done. Sometimes I think you could use a little bit of detail, and it wouldn't uh, hurt at all to have some authorities who've talked about some of these applications, especially when you're talking about PTSD or uh, some physical activities that might be involved in doing you know, delicate work or something that is uh, like in outer space, uh, those sorts of things. I think uh, you would benefit from having some uh, data or some authority behind you on those particular points. Um, still way too much moving around back and forth. You need to settle in and speak to us. When you move, it should be purposeful and it doesn't, it just often feels like it's your, your, the purpose is to release your attention as opposed to emphasize a particular idea or point. All right. The, the original concept was that I was going to be moving around the classroom. Um, 360 that. like a virtual reality person? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we'd have all needed the little headset to go with that, I think. <laughs> all right, thank you.